Welcome to an explanation of how a clutch, the dual clutch itself, operates on a dual clutch transmission. Uh, we won't go inside here, really. We're going to spend our time with this dual clutch. Now, these are serviced as an assembly, okay? Of course, you can see the clutch here, and notice how it's loose or free. It's not loaded. This is kind of uh, total opposite of what happens in a manual transmission. When the clutch assembly is assembled and all bolted together onto the flywheel, and this, in essence, is, is the flywheel, two clutches, all in one. And we'll, we'll, go, we'll take it apart and look inside here in a minute. But uh, a manual transmission, the clutches are clamped or, or held and pressed together. And so this works opposite of that. And there are two sets of fingers, one for one clutch disc and one for the other clamping force on the other clutch disc. So um, what was traditionally called and referred to as a throwout bearing in the past, and this is what I'm going to refer to as a two-stage, and I'll show you the little pieces here in a moment. This is actually an apply bearing, okay? It might be sold or talked about as a throwout bearing, but it's probably more so an apply and I'm going to get the bottom piece of this bearing first. It's got rollers, and it reaches in. And, of course, when it's pushed down, and I can't physically do it right here. It's pretty stout. When that's applied, then that disc for that shaft, whichever shaft it's on, there's two shafts here, that clutch is engaged. And then the other part of this throwout bearing is, uh, whoops, there we go. The other part of the throwout bearing is released. And so this clutch, the shaft it's attached to, can now stage the next shift or shift into the next gear. And then in a moment later, this will be released, and this set of fingers would be pushed down and applied. Okay. Um, let me this is coming in pieces because one part of the throwout bearing actually uh, was intact. But another part of the throwout bearing... Uh, came out in pieces when we separated this transmission from the uh, engine of the car. Uh, all the ball bearings, everything fell out of here of this two-stage uh, throwout bearing. So what we're saying is, here are these uh, release, for release forks, and they work together in unison. Here's one of them in installed in the transmission. And there's an electric motor that has a gear, and it's connected to the end, okay? And this electric motor rotates real quick and rapid to move these forks. How are they moved? Here's the key. So here's the gear that they apply or connect, the electric motor connects to. As I slide this back and forth, this ramp and roller assembly moves the fork, okay? And that's what allows basically an instantaneous shift. As one clutch is being applied, the other one is released, and then the other one can release and the other one applies. So there's virtually no torque loss from the engine to the transmission when you change from one gear to the next. Okay, so let's take one apart. I'm gonna set this down here, but let's go ahead and take one of these apart. So here's the same clutch mechanism, okay, the dual clutch assembly. Again, you can't take them apart and service them uh, separately. It's all one unit. And I had to cut these rivets off. They were, they were kind of a, a tough, tough coming off, but they came off. I'm going to refer to this as probably uh, what we would call the cover, okay? And even a manual clutch assembly has a cover piece. This next, we'll get to that in a minute. This next piece is where the two sets of uh, pressure release fingers reside. And these impact this clutch disc and the one underneath. So here's, I guess, what you would call the pressure plate, a dual acting kind of pressure plate. And in harmony, in harmony with that plate, of course, here's this first disc. It would come off and attach to that 
input gear or input shaft. This intermediate plate, I'm going to call it that. I don't know what it's actually called because no one's ever published that information. This rests mm. This rests on the hub of the transmission. And this is kind of a press fit. Okay, so I'll go ahead and pull this intermediate piece back off. And here's the other disc. And that's where this hub gear comes into play. So this hub gear is uh, going to be splined to the other input shaft. And that hub gear is what connects that disc to the shaft like so. So there, so there you have it, the definition of dual clutch, okay, two clutches, one assembly. And of course, this is the piece that bolts to the flex plate like a thin flywheel on the back of the crankshaft of the engine. So to reassemble, here's the, again, that fastens to the uh, flex plate. Here's kind of a reaction plate that everything gets pushed against. We'll put this disc back together, or back in place. This one falls in here. This pressure plate. Sits about like that. And of course the cover piece. Okay. To conclude, Whenever you do any uh, service, as far as replacing the clutch assembly, or maybe you've had to replace the transmission, and the transmission from Ford to replace, that, that's my only knowledge of how to get a hold of a, a new one, is about $3,200 our cost, and that's not even installed. So these are kind of our inexpensive uh, transmission because they do have their failure problem. They do have their failures, unfortunately. And these clutches, they also fail too. The main problem with the clutches is one, sometimes there's a shaft seal inside here that leaks the fluid out of the transmission, gets onto the clutches, and uh, when that, gets, that oil gets on here, then the clutch starts to grab, and it doesn't, it's not a smooth engagement. The other problem is, is just what happened to this unit. The throw-up bearing disintegrated. It came, it came apart. The little rollers that used to be in here are gone. And therefore, it allowed this clutch release fork to wear. And uh, what happened with this, this, what these, this came out of the car, this came out of, is it only had reverse. There was no forward gears at all. And the reason why is this physically could not engage or compress the clutch fingers in a way to uh, engage first gear. We only had reverse. It was kind of a fun project. But, last, but the last point to make is whenever you've done any kind of service to the clutch or transmission replacement or, or what have you, you have to reflash, which basically resets parameters for smooth shifting again. Because the system has learned and adapted to failures to a point. But once the failures get too far gone, then of course uh, there's, there's no way to adapt to that. But again, hopefully this has been a uh, good explanation on the operation of a dual clutch, clutch assembly on a dual clutch transmission. Thank you.